Hi everybody, and welcome to the Elm tutorial part 8. My name is Tensor from the Tensor Programming Blog. And today we are going to implement a Material Design Lite into our Elm Reddit single page application. So before we get started, let's actually take a look at what we're going to do here. So as you can see here, we have an entire set of libraries, this whole thing here that helps us implement the material design which is based on uh, Google's material design specification. So this is mostly a CSS slash JavaScript library and it was fully ported over to Elm in a very nice way. So there are a few things that we need to note. So there are some required boilerplate pieces here. So for example we need to add a certain field to our model and then we want to add a message to our union type as well as a pattern matching here to help make this all function. And then when we start to render objects, for example, if we were rendering a text field, we would do it in this way. And as you can see, there's this weird digit here that's being passed. And there's a reason for that. So let's take a look real quick. I just wanna go over this first before we start doing it so you guys aren't confused when we actually do it. So as you can see here, render takes in a message, a button, a message, a menu, a layout, a toggles, tooltip, tabs, dispatch, and then outputs. Um, so this here is actually the menu and what it's specifying is where in the menu this object is going to be. So anyway, as you can see there, there are a lot of different objects that we can use. For example, we're looking at the different buttons. I mean, there are flat buttons and raised buttons and raised flat buttons with color and turned off buttons and etc. So, and you can see this is all Elm code as well. And it shows us how we can implement them. So if you want to extend further past what we actually do in this tutorial, it would be rather easy to do so. So of course, when we start any Elm application or when we actually uh, bring in any library in Elm, we want to install it first into our package.json file. So to install this package, we just type in Elm package install the boys backslash Elm dash MDL. And I've already installed it, so it just says package is configured successfully. All right, so let's make our imports here. All right, so here are our new imports. We're importing material, which is the full library. Then we're importing material.scheme, and this is going to help us set up our page. We're importing material.lists, or list rather, and we're calling it lists. And this is going to help us deal with list elements inside of our application. We're importing material.layout, which is going to help us with our layout overall. We're importing material.button for our button, material.text field for our text field, importing material.color to get some of those colors in here. And we're importing material.options and exposing specifically a function called CSS, which allows us to actually create CSS elements on the fly. So material.options is basically just the uh, API for the CSS elements inside of this material design library. So as we saw before, we need to make some boilerplate here. So first we need to add a field called MDL. And we're gonna say material.model. And then we need to go down to our init function. And if we were to leave this alone as it is, it would actually cause an error because we're only passing through our string into our subreddit and then our empty list into our posts. We're not passing any initialization into MDL. So the way we do this is we just, it's its pretty simple. We just type in material.model with a lowercase m and this will actually clear up any errors. So now we want to add the boilerplate part to our message type in our update. So this is the boilerplate. We're saying MDL and then we're passing it material.message and a normal message. And let's actually add the pattern matching part. So our update here, or our pattern matching part here is just saying that MDL is going to be passed an action, which would be of type message. And 
we will call the material.update function on MDL and that message and then we will update our model accordingly. So a lot of what we're going to do is actually going to take place in the view and we're going to actually uh, take this view that we have currently here and actually abstract it further into another function so that we can define a more generalized version of our page as our main view. So we're going to call this view content and now we're going to create a view function. And our view is not going to be unlike how it was before. It's still going to take in the model and output an HTML and a message. So the first thing we're going to pass into our view function is this scheme, top with scheme, color cyan, color lime, and then we're gonna pipe in our layout render. And what this is basically doing is it's allowing us to set up a specific layout for our view. And then we're going to be able to take these other two functions and put them into the layout in a specific manner. So we want to have a fixed header for our layout. And as you can see, we've added more here. So we say layout render, then we pass the message that we want, then we pass our model.mdl in here. And then we say layout.fixedheader. And now we can actually create a record. And here's our record. So we're passing in what's a header element. And we're saying the header element is a list inside of, or a header inside of a list. And then we're creating a drawer element and a tabs element. And both of these are empty lists or a tuple of empty lists. And then our main element, which has our view content function in it. And we're passing the model to this function. So as you can see, like if we wanted to, we could add a drawer and a bunch of tabs as well through a bunch of functions, we could make more functions that work as sort of components and then just input them in here. But for now, we're just going to leave this as is. We actually want to create our header. Our header is not going to receive anything. It's just going to be a piece of HTML as a message. Okay, so this is the basic skeleton of our header. We have a div, and then inside of that div, we have an h5. And then we're calling a function called style. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to call in CSS elements that we want directly in our header. So as you can see, we're calling float comma left as a tuple. So this is sort of like entering normal CSS. It's just we're entering it as a tuple instead. All right, so here is our completed header. And just remember that this is going to be at the top of our application. So in here, we're just saying, okay, we're going to have an h5 and we want the style to be float left padding left 40 pixels and the text to be reddit spa and so let's run elm reactor real quick and we're getting a little error here because color needs to be color.lime here's our application as you can see here's our header piece we have our h5 inside of a div and it is coming out as a cyan color as we specified. So as you can see here, we have color cyan. This is our main color. And then our accent color is color lime. And that's why the header is cyan. If we look at the actual HTML elements of this page, specifically if we look at the header piece, as you can see here, it's a div and inside of the div, it has an H5 with the CSS directly in it. And as you can see, we have that float left, padding left, or padding left 40 pixels directly embedded in here. Also notice that all of these classes are being dynamically created and that's because of our material design uh, library. So let's add some material stuff to the rest of our application as well. All right, so before we actually start to edit our view content, we want to create what is sort of a style to add to our containers. So we're going to create a function called container style. Now, as you can see, container style is going to output a list of options properties. And then we have these non-descript types, A and B, and you'll see exactly what it looks like here in a moment. Our container style, we have a margin of auto, and then we have a padding left of 10% and a padding right of 10%. And we can add whatever we want in here. So for example, we could add a padding top too and a padding bottom. Now all of this is just styling and it's just another way of creating styling. So if you look up here, we can call style directly inside of our elements and then we can pass tuples with the styling in it. 
or we can just create a function and we can call the CSS function on two string elements that have the styling in them and then import them into our elements. Let's actually import this into our view content function. So we've imported our container style now. We use a function called options.div because this is a div here. And then we're bringing in container style and then we're surrounding our entire object here with a list. So it's a list element now. If we look at our application, you can see here everything looks a bit more centered. The text looks cleaner. It's got that Roboto look to it. Even when we bring up the uh, actual threads, everything just looks a little bit better though the colors are clashing and we'll fix that here in a moment. So first we want to change the way that our text field looks. So we're going to call text field dot render and then we're going to pass in MDL. Then we're going to pass in the position that this uh, element is inside of our actual container and this is one. And then we're going to say model dot MDL. Then we're going to say options. These are the actual elements inside of the text field. So for example, we have our on input but we need to call options.onInput instead of just the HTML.onInput. And then of course we pass in our update Reddit function like we were before. And then we're also calling textField.value and we're putting model.subreddit.name inside of it. Now basically what this is going to do is rather than have a placeholder, we're just going to have the value of the subreddit model inside of our text box at all times. So let's take a look at what this does to our application. As you can see here, we have a new text box and it's got some nice little effects to it. So now we are rendering our button with our MDL. So button.render MDL. Then we're putting in two here and we're passing in model.mdl. And instead of just normal on click, we're passing options.onclick, get rid it. We've added button.raised, button.ripple, button.color button.accent and the CSS margin left five pixels thing. And we can add more of these because there are tons more that you can choose from if you really want to. And here's what it looks like. As you can see, it's being colored with our accent color and it's sort of got a raised look to it. And when you click it, it sort of ripples out. It's very nice looking. So now finally, we are changing our div here and we're calling it class wrap posts. And then we're calling this section element here. And then we are adding list.ul. And we changed the way that we mapped this. And we're just putting it directly into our list.ul. So now we're going to change our post view to help make things a little bit nicer. So instead of a div at the beginning, we're going to type in list.la. And this is because this is going to become a, a list element rather than a div. All right, so this is what our lists will now look like. So we have list content one, and inside of it, we have our first link. We put some styling on this link. So we made the uh, text color sort of a dark, darkish color. And then we've added some font weight. And then for our list two, we've added the same styling as well in here. And we're still piping in our permalink and we are still saying comments on the bottom. So let's actually take a look at what this is looking like. So if we reload and we search, as you can see, everything now looks a little bit better. Each thing is in its own column and they sort of have nice little symmetry here. And of course, adding the uh, target of blank allows us to open a new tab every time we click on one of these links. So we're not finished here yet. We want to actually add one more little feature into our application. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring in the comment number. So we're going to make a field in our post called comments and it's going to be of type int. And then we want to go all the way down to our decode post function. So we come down to here and we add json.map5 post. And then we add json at data number of comments. And instead of string, of course, we put int. So now we're actually bringing in the number of comments in here. And if we go up to our view again, so let's go up to our post view right here. And where it says comments here, what we can do is we can now add that element in here. So as you can see, we've concatenated our two string version of post.comments with our comments with a bunch of parentheses surrounding it. And we need to, of course, pipe all of this into our text function to make it work. So now if we take a look at our application, as you can see here, 
we have all the common numbers. So it will actually tell us when we are looking at it, oh, this has seven comments, this has 11 comments, etc. So yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that this is something that is very possible with Elm. You can really make some nice, very simple applications. Honestly, adding all of this to the view was a very simple and very intuitive process. It's very much like plugging in pieces of HTML inside of a, an HTML application. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you do, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to comment. And if you dislike, then of course, by all means, downvote us as much as you want. Feel free to follow us on Twitter if you want to find out when the newest videos are going to be coming out. Anyway, guys, I hope you have a good day.